here we go. Okay, so I'm thinking about how we talk about bad people and what we really mean by that. And we all kind of understand we're talking about people who are essentially of bad character, who break trust and don't honor their word and create problems, they see conflict, gossip, backbite, etc. And I'm thinking about how they've basically been rewarded for bad behavior and have then developed bad ca character accordingly because that's what's been incentivized for them. And they're not really bad people, but they are of bad character and that's bad news for people dealing with them. And I was just thinking about how in the modern world, it's almost encouraged, it's, it's sort of incentivized to do whatever it takes to get where you're going because we're very objective oriented. We're like, you gotta, you gotta be the best, you gotta be successful, you gotta be rich, you gotta do all these things. In, and again, we have to question what, what is success and what is wealth and these things. But again, we, we see what's advertised to us as the ideal and we are encouraged to strive for it. And there's a bit of a Machiavellian tone that influences the way people approach it. And then that sets the, uh, the bar for competition in a way that ultimately, if you're not willing to be cutthroat, you're going to be the dog that gets eaten, right? And that's unfortunate because it's not really a dog-eat-dog -dog world. We evolved and flourished as a species because of our ability to cooperate. And so it's a pretty dark view of things. And I'm, I'm struck by the fact that we think we're so evolved, we've, we've come such a long way, look at our technology and our security and what we can do with medicine and launch people into space, and these are all impressive accomplishments. And they've yielded many great benefits, I'm not criticizing this, but I think we've lost the plot because nobody's really very happy with all of these medical advancements, people aren't very healthy, the suffering just seems to multiply. and. I'm trying to imagine what it would be like for somebody from a hundred years ago to come into the present. And that's, that's not ancient times, that's 1924. We had cars and phones and light bulbs and, you know, by then women were kind of making a move to be, be on the scene, and right? But we were still mostly living in small towns and people knew each other and it was a very different incentive system back then where if you did lie or you were, you know, um, I don't know, creating trouble through gossip, a lot of people gossip, but creating trouble and backbiting and doing things in bad faith, it would destroy your reputation. You would be an outcast. You would actually limit your opportunities because everybody would know you're dishonorable they can't trust you to do business, they can't leave their kids with you, whatever it is, and you would lose social credit in that, that structure. Whereas now, we don't know each other. We're, we're so anonymous to each other. We're even anonymous to ourselves. It's, we don't really know who we are because we don't have a community to reflect that to us accurately. And I think that's why we see so many of these issues wherein, let's let them the good people go. There we go. Driving and filming are a bit of a juggling act. Anyway, um, now I've lost the train of thought, haven't I? Nowadays, we are ultimately incentivized to do whatever it takes to get ahead, and because there are few people who would know better or hold us accountable or in any way cost us an advantage. It's, it's hard to go against the lesser aspects of our human nature. And so you see a lot more deceit and corruption in ways that we have all these systems to protect against it. And yet it seems to be getting worse in so many ways. And I just think that it's funny to think that for all the advancement, we've lost these fundamental core elements that hold people together and hold us accountable. And why does it matter if we're honest or accountable? Because we've all got a role to play and maybe less so now, now that we've outsourced so much to corporations and government and other systems like that. Yeah, we've lost a lot of our 
our power and with that our responsibility. Responsibility and power go hand in hand and when we give over the power to other people, having responsibility doesn't seem so necessary. And so we've really cost ourselves. We kind of shot ourselves in the foot with this because as great as it is to have all of the things we have, we don't have anything to serve as a counterbalance and hold us together and keep our feet on the ground and keep our heads on straight. And and just the, the virtue of honor has been lost. And I know that that's now taken on a negative connotation because you hear about things like honor killings where people maybe go too far in the other direction, but there's a spectrum and throwing out the whole scale and saying none of it's worth anything is probably a major contributor to so many of the, the struggles we, we see and encounter ourselves living in this modern world. And it's unfortunate because it's, it's not just about being good and virtuous for the sake of itself, it's because economies won't run without trust. And by the way, how's the economy going? Um, everything, everything relies on trust. And trust requires that we take responsibility, we're accountable, and we're honorable. To the best of our abilities as very flawed humans, we still need to uphold this as part of keeping the fabric of our reality and our society together. And so, if I have to make a case for why be honest, Jordan Peterson makes an interesting case. He says, it's the adventure of a lifetime to tell the truth. And I agree, because you don't know what's going to happen when you tell the truth. You really are just stepping off the cliff blindly saying, I'm just going to own this. But you don't have to constantly look over your shoulder and, and worry about it coming around to bite you in the ass. So there's also a freedom in that. And there's the adventure that Peterson talks about. And there's also the ability to be part of a cohesive society that provides for our practical, emotional, and social needs in such a way that I think we would see much better outcomes if we were able to bring it back down to the level of the people, saying we all play a role. And I think we would feel far less disempowered and, and hopeless and overwhelmed. And you know, that's a very easy state to exploit, and it's not the good people who come to exploit it usually. So when I'm looking at the big mess we're in, it keeps coming back for me that being truthful and honorable and accountable aren't nice to have items. They're essential, and they're not goody two shoes ideals of a bygone era. They're probably the best shovel we have to tunnel our way out of this dark place we found we find ourselves in now. So. Just a quick case for why I think bringing back classic virtues might actually help us to become more evolved, truly modern people who can benefit from all the advancements while retaining all the fundamental needs of human society to the benefit of all concerned. All right, so that's my two cents. Thanks for coming along. Bye.